Hello and welcome everybody. Here I will share in this presentation with Franklin Alvarez, my colleague at the Auditory Prosthetic Group, led by Waldo Nogueira. Uh, this talk is called Design of an End-to-End -end Deep Learning Sound Coding Strategy for Cochlear Implants and Validation through an Objective Metric Based on Mutual Information. So what is a cochlear implant? The cochlear implant, or CI, is a surgically implanted medical device that can restore hearing to a profoundly deaf person. The sound is captured by the microphone and transformed to stimulate the auditory nerve electrically. The algorithm in charge of doing such a process is called the CI sound coding strategy. There are several different sound coding strategies out there in the market, but here we will focus on the advanced combination encoder, or ACE for short, which is shown here in the block diagram. First, there will be some front-end processing over the captured audio that will perform enhancement of target signal, such as um, speech. Then the FFT or fast Fourier transform converts the time domain signal into the spectral representation of it. Then the envelope detection groups the frequency bins into M bands. Out of these M bands, N spectral maxima will be selected by the band selection block. Then the loudness growth function, or LGF, will compress these selected bands between 0 and 1. And finally, the mapping block will map this compressed bands between the threshold and comfortable levels of the subject. At the output of the sound coding strategy, we can see the electrodogram, which is a visual representation of the electrical simulation that happens inside the cochlea. It specifically shows which electrode is being stimulated, when and by how much, depicted by the black marks inside the electrodogram. Another sound coding strategy that we will talk about in this talk was developed in this group and the APG, and is called Deep Ace. As you can see in the figure, it's similar to the advanced combination encoder, but contains a DNN module that will perform end-to-end -end CI speech denoising, and is marked in orange. As you can see, it's comprised of an encoder, a deep envelope detector that will act as the envelope detection module in ACE, a separator that will estimate a mask by which the deep envelope detector output will be multiplied by, and then finally a decoder that will output the denoised LGF output. Then the band selection and mapping are kept intact or identical to the A sound coding strategy because it's highly subject sensitive. To test these speech denoising algorithms, such as DPACE or other front end filtering denoising algorithms, typically we invite CI subjects to the clinic. These tests are time consuming and, in general, it's difficult to find volunteers to do these experiments. That's why it's, it's convenient to develop an objective measure to assess the performance without the actual subjects. And this is what my, my colleague Franklin is going to talk about. Hello, my name is Franklin Alvarez. I am also a PhD student in the APG group at the Hanover Medical School. And I would like to talk shortly about the proposed objective measure used to test a deep ACE performance compared to a regular ACE sound coding strategy. SAMI stands for Spike Activity Mutual Information Index, and it's an intrusive objective measure that computes the mutual information between a clean speech neural signal and a degraded neural signal to obtain the unintelligibility index. Uh, SAMI consists of mainly three stages. Uh, the peripheral auditory model is based on a state-of-the-art neuron population model that can be acoustically stimulated. The audio signal is resampled at 100 kHz, then 25 critical bands covering the speech frequency range between uh, 125 and 8 kHz are defined. Each critical band contains 100 neurons, given a total of 2,500 neurons. Uh, parameters on these neurons have been randomized to cover for all their behavioral spectrum. The output of these neurons will be the spike activity, which is a signal that counts the amount of action potentials that occur every time step for every critical band. The ideal listener uh, stands for a healthy peripheral auditory system, while the real listener may or may not emulate some form of individual hearing loss. In the informational block, uh, the signal is resampled again at 5 kHz, which is just above the maximum spiking rate of the neurons in the peripheral model. The information contained in the spike activity is directly related to its entropy, and the entropy is calculated from its firing efficiency. The higher the entropy, the more information is potentially being transmitted. However, the joint entropy between two signals takes into account the joint spiking probability, basically whether spikes or not spikes are happening at the same time or not. 
as shown in the mutual information equation, the higher the joint entropy, the less likely is that both signals are related. The mutual information is only lower bounded. When the two signals are completely perpendicular, their mutual information will be zero. But the maximum mutual information will depend on how much information is in any of those uh, neural activities. To calculate the intelligibility index, we implement a speech detection algorithm. It basically looks at the information contained in the reference neural activity and then selects those frames where the, a threshold is surpassed. The index is then calculated as the sum of the mutual information contained in those C frames where the speech is detected. To make the index upper bounded, we always compare it to the amount of the information contained in the simulated neural activity. In short, the index is the ratio between the mutual information and the received information, as you can see in the equation. Because we are evaluating a sound coding strategy for cochlear implants, we incorporated a vocoder to transform electrodograms into audio that simulates electrical heating. Uh, in this image, there is a visual presentation of how this signal looks in this various stage can be seen. So starting with the electrodograms, then the audio equivalent to the electrical heating, then the neural activity for different frequencies, the reference path, the degrade signal path, and finally the mutual information to compute SAMI. We tested the algorithm with two noise sources, the CCITT, which is speech-shaped noise, and ECRA7, which is bubble noise. We also compared the performance with TASNET plus A, which is also implements a denoising algorithm in the front end, and SAMI always returned higher values to the denoising algorithm, as expected. It was harder for SAMI with the bubble noise, though. It might be because ICRA7 used actual speaker as a noise source, which increases the mutual information between the noise and the target speech signal. Nevertheless, SAMI was capable of reproducing to some extent the results from listening tests where the benefit of using deep AVE or other denoising algorithms can be seen. With further tuning, SAMI might be capable of using information theory to separate different speaker signals. Uh, with this though, I would like to conclude the presentation and now we are open for some questions from your side. Thank you very much.